Welcome to the escarpment. This is my model railway HO build channel and I'm your host Jason. Today's video I'm going to take you through and show you how I built my Fremo module frames. So soon I'm going to take you through a bunch of pictures, bit of a, a bit of a slideshow uh, that showed step by step on how I put these Fremo module frames together. So I'll do some narrative over the top, sort of explain a few things. And so hopefully at the end of the video, you sort of get something out of it. Now, there's many ways to build these modules. Obviously, depending on the standard you're applying, there's going to be certain dimensions that you'll need to comply with, certain like stuff you need to comply with. Now in this video I'm not going to touch on anything other than just putting together the frames. I'm going to put together other videos as I go through this build with the Fremo uh, and stuff like the electronics, the track lane, etc, etc. But for now hopefully you enjoy what I'm about to present. For this Fremo project of mine I end up getting this 17 millimeter plywood form board from Bunnings. I think it measured 2400 millimeters by 1200 millimeters and basically used my plunge track saw to get the majority of cuts from this board. Here I've got the, the sides and the end plates cut out, starting to cut out for the three sections that make up this module. Those aluminium plates you can see on the ground there. I'm actually going to use those on the inside of the face plates of my sections because basically while I'll use the dowel pins to align these sections together I'm actually going to just be using clamps to hold them together. So I just thought if I'm using clamps I don't want to mark anything so I thought these plates on the inside would be a great way to have a, a sturdy area for the clamps. So the ends of each of the sections is going to have a full face plate, meaning they're not going to have the, the side plates adjacent to them. Now that probably would have been easier from a clamping point of view because I could have used smaller clamps, but due to the fact the face plate is the full width, I had to use these sash or these T-bar sash clamps. So in this picture you can see that one of the sections is clamped together. First I glued it and then once the glue set I came back and screwed each end in. On top there, I don't know if you can see with the picture, I've also used a, a belt clamp that goes right around the perimeter of this section just to clamp the top part to help with getting a, a very tight bond. So once that was all together, I screwed it. You can see there on the ends that I started to fill it in with wood putty. I just like to have my boards clean. I'm using a seven millimeter top board. What I did was, I, I think they're only about 25 millimeters thick, but I cut of the same material, the 17 mil, and glued them around the edges on the inside. Because the top board's gonna be flush with the frame, all I did was took an off piece and went around with the seven mil, just to make sure that I had this glued in place where it's gonna be flush. Next, I did the cross sections on the top section. This is just basically, you know, to give the top board just some support there. This is just another view with each of the sections at different stages. You can see the first one closest that I've got those cross section supports in place, or at least they're glued and they're clamped together. You can see there each of those sections at different stages and you can see the length of it there so overall it's about 3.6 meters long uh, in the next stage i've got some of these l brackets and just sort of screwed them across these sections on the inside just to give it some strength hold it in place i mean it's also glued i use gorilla glue so at the ends here you can see i started to put in the leg blocks now I'm going to have some folding legs, so I needed a, a bit of space where I could put in the, the folding hinge hardware. And you can see here I've started to glue it in place. That piece of wood you can see right here, that's just the spacer that actually isn't staying there. That was just to make sure these blocks were in the right 
position or height. So once the legs folded with the folding hardware, it was flush along the bottom of this framework. Now you can see it all glued into place now. I'm pretty sure I've, I've also screwed those blocks in from the sides and from the front and filled it in with wood putty, obviously, to get a smooth finish on the outside. You've probably noticed that the each ends of this particular section, you can see the blocks are different widths due to the fact on how the folding legs are gonna be folding in when you fold them down into these frames. So here you can see folding hinge hardware that I used. I actually got this off Amazon, I believe. And you can see here it's been screwed into one of the legs to this section. Next, I just started cutting out sections, top boards. You can see there, that's quite good, quite flush to the top of the frames. If there's anything that's a little bit out of sync, I'll just come in and sand it. I mean, later on, I need to just fill up some of the gaps anyway, but be coming back to sand. You can see the legs have been screwed in place onto the blocks that support each of those legs. You can see how each side of the legs offset each other, and that's why there was different sizes of those blocks. Now, for each of the legs, I had to have adjustable feet. These ones, I think I found them on Amazon as well, and they're, they're pretty decent. They actually have a lip on the bottom where they support the weight of the leg as well, so not everything is weighing down or weighing against those screws into the wood. I think I've got about somewhere between 50 and 70 mil adjustment and then I also put these felt feet on the bottom. Next it's just showing a picture of the other two sections as they were sort of progressed with this one. So this next picture here you can actually see a close-up of the, the additional cross-section supports here on the bottom. You can see there at the ends you've got the legs there. So when the legs fold down I needed to make sure they were flush with the bottom of the frames, each of the sections. And this is where these came in handy. Plus I also needed to be able to tie them down when transporting. So I used these M6 inserts, you can see there on those cross-sectional supports. And that's how I tied down these legs. So this next picture here shows you how each of the legs fold down. You can see how they're offsetted to each other. You can see that I used some wing nuts to tie down the legs into those M6 inserts. I did actually change them out for another type of fastener. So as, as mentioned, so this is what I swapped out the original wing nuts. These are, are basically the Richmond M6 hand bolt from Bunnings and you can also see there the inserts that I used. It's just a matter of drilling out a certain width and then screwing those in and then I actually put a bit of glue in there as well when I screwed those inserts in just to make sure they weren't going to move or go anywhere. The reason I switched to these ones, they were just easier and quicker to undo and do up. So here I needed to tie the legs together and I used these L-shaped aluminium brackets. I think it was about 12 mil by 12 mil. I didn't really need any big stuff. They were quite strong, especially when using the, the L-shaped type instead of just a flat piece of aluminium where they can actually bend a bit. These ones don't bend, so they, were, they worked out quite well. I had to make sure that these were put in correctly because they could stop the folding legs coming down. What I mean by that is one side would have had these brackets screwed from the top and then the other side would have had these brackets screwed from the bottom. The ones that were screwed at the bottom that would have to be folded down first and then the top ones then come down. So there's a bit of a sequence there to fold and unfold. Again, another picture just showing those brackets in place as well as how they fold down into each other. So like I said, the, the bottom ones there facing downwards, those sets need to be folded down first. And then the ones at the top would then fold last. So as part of the Fremo standards and when you're using points, you need to make sure you can do it from both sides. And so I decided that I wanted to make up some custom inserts. Here you can just see the designs, they're hot off the uh, 3D resin printer. Just 
Here you can actually see, this is what they look like. And there you can see the hole that I drilled and these just slot in from the inside through. You can see here, put through from the inside end and that's how they sit. Now, later on, I ended up around the edges, I ended up using some wood putty just to, I don't know, give them that flush look, look really smart. While I'm using the AMRA Freeform module standards, I'm also, mine's a little bit of a hybrid. So I know there's a couple of folks up here using the US standards. So I wanted to make sure even when it wasn't in use, I could actually do some runnings on these Freemo module. And so what I decided to do is put in my own DCC command station. Now I ended up going with the DCC Concepts egress system, which is a five amp system. And so this will be able to be plugged in and out depending on the situation. And so these were the templates, put them on, ready to be cut out. So this picture you can see, got those holes cut out and uh, I still need to come back to do the switch holes as well. Just started to do some undercoating. So you can see in the corners there, the gray. When using these form plywood boards from Bunnings, due to the coatings really smooth and slippery, I probably recommend whether you're gluing or painting, it's just to take some 220 grit sandpaper and just rough it up a little bit. It doesn't need a lot. So this next picture you can see I've got the hardware in place. I'm just doing some test fits just to make sure those holes that I cut were big enough. In regards to transporting, I wanted to make sure, because if these are transported on their sides, I wanted to make sure there was nothing extruding out that could catch on anything. So I had to do some recess work. What you can see there at the top with my switch hardware, it's all internal and they're deep enough when the switches do get attached, that the toggles won't be sticking out. So you can see the inside of this particular section. You can see the electronics there, how they stick in, and you can see how everything's been planned out so the legs don't interfere with anything. There's plenty of room for wiring, because what you can see here, you're looking from the top in. There'll be a top board that goes over the top there. So plenty of space for everything that needs to be done to conform with the standards. Given that each of the folding hardware to the legs operates separately, I needed a way, because you know, at one end there, I needed them to pull down on both of those pieces of hardware, and it was just a pain in the ass. So I decided to use L-shaped brackets to bolt to each of the, the levers to the folding leg hardware. So I, I can just press down once and it operates both sides. Here you can see, started to put the undercoat on, started to put some of the black top coat on as well. But you can see here how they look when they're folded, the brackets are in place. This one just shows the section, how it looks when the legs are unfolded. This is my middle section to the module, it's where the DCC command station is, etc. Now I've got the, the top board screwed down in place. The frame itself, the legs, it's had all the, the coats done. It's fully painted, ready to go. It's just showing the middle section as well as one of the end sections together. As I mentioned earlier, they'll be clamped in place and I'll be installing some uh, flat aluminium plates on the inside, on the ends of those just so, yeah, I don't mark anything when I go to clamp it together. And just to finish off, you can see here, I've got all the three sections now painted, they're all done. Uh, two of them have got their top boards in place. I've started to fill the gaps. The, the bottom one here still needs to be screwed in and then filled. Once that's all done, it'll be sanded and then it'll be ready to clamp them together and then do the dowels or the alignment. So I hope you found that informative. Now, like I said, there's, there's many ways to put these things together. This was just my way on what I did with these straight sections for this module. I've still got to come back and do some tidying up and another coat on one of the sections. The top board still got to be screwed in place, but I need to finish off the painting on that one before that goes ahead. 
I still need to come back, sand the tops of these ones, have them ready. There is some wobble with the modules. Obviously the end legs are only being tied together and not really tied to the main frame. Now I'm looking at that design. I will be tying them to the frame. Now I don't know whether I'll just do the middle module uh, on both sides to tie the legs to the frame. And if that middle part's dirty, and then once I then plug them together and clamp them in place, they should be okay. I, hope, you know, I don't know whether I'll need to do the same to the end ones. But anyway, I'll, I'll go through that. I'll come up with a design. I've got something in mind. Um, I just need to test it out. As I've mentioned, I am going to have dedicated videos to this build. So there will be one with the, the wiring, the electronics, the, you know, the, I guess the track laying, all that type of stuff. And then obviously with the scenery and then with the, the coal loader. I think I'm going to leave it there. So for now, stay safe, look after each other. Bye for now.